Right, welcome to this F5 video on divisional structures and in this we're going to address one main big question which is about assessing performance in divisions. However, linked with that there are two aspects. One, standard divisional appraisal but then linked with that the idea of transfer pricing which might make quite a difference to the profit being achieved by a division and hence to the uh, result and the performance uh, being appraised and any bonuses and so on which might be awarded to divisional managers. So, divisional structures. Uh, we can organise the company in a variety of ways. We can delegate responsibility in a number of ways. We might look at uh, simply uh, letting people be in charge of costs, a cost centre, or in revenues. So a sales department might only be looking at the revenue generated and not worrying about the cost. It could be a profit centre where we have both revenue and cost involved or for a division, most likely an investment centre, because divisions quite often have some control over whether or not to invest in certain projects, make investments, uh, which will then produce profits over the next few years. Uh, when do we get divisions? Divisions mostly occur where you either have very different products, so it doesn't make a lot of sense to have, say, production manager in charge of producing, say, uh, office furniture, and uh, in charge of producing... Um, uh, ships, for example, you would have a ship division and you'd have an office furniture division. Quite different because production is different, marketing is different, the uh, 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 sales is different, and so on. Everything, research, development, so on, totally different. Or it might be geography. So it might be you have an African division and an Asian division, an American division, a UK division, a North division, a South division, and so on. Because again, otherwise, production manager and so on is constantly uh, zipping between the various locations. So it's either uh, to do with location or product, because they're very different. So having established that, how do we then assess their performance? And very commonly it's connected to bonuses and remuneration of those who are managing the division. So the two most common measures used for divisions uh, both use the same thing, and they actually have very similar names, which are very confusing. Return on investment, or commonly called ROI, and residual income, commonly called RI. So, really quite confusing, ROI and RI, return on investment, residual income. Uh, return on investment simply looks at the percentage return we have made this year in terms of profit over the investment which has been put in. Whereas residual income looks at the profit and takes off a notional interest charge on the investment. So let's just see what uh, differences there are. ROI gives a percentage where residual income uh, gives uh, an absolute amount of money. Residual income does build in the target return inside the notional interest, whether it be 10%, 15%, or whatever whereas ROI has to be then compared against some target percentage. So residual income, anything positive, is going to be uh, welcome, it's going to increase residual income, uh, whereas return on investment, you can't say until you compare to the target whether they've done well or not. This can, these two differences can lead to what are called dysfunctional decisions or a lack of goal congruence, where the divisional manager will do things in the division's best interest and therefore his bonus's best interest, which in fact are not in the best interest of the company overall. Now that is possibly a problem, sometimes a problem with ROI, but won't be with re residual income for those two reasons. There are other reasons why residual income might lead to the same issues, but not because of those two issues up here. Uh, and lastly, a bit of a theoretical point, probably not going to come up, but just so you know, if the residual income has the national interest rate the same as the company's cost of capital, then the present value of residual incomes will be the same as the net present value of the project. So, let's have a look at an example just to actually uh, uh, get in there and see if it makes sense. The division has a single project, which is going to generate annual cash flows of 20000 for five years. Net assets in the division are a single machine, which is a new product. It estimates the cost of development as 25,000. 
and the production costs as $20 per unit. After analysing the markets, Volta Price 